What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac, and better late than ever, we're here with the demo for Universal Control, which is more or less the biggest feature that was announced for macOS Monterey that didn't make it to the initial release. And that was unfortunate, but for anyone who doesn't mind loading up an iPad OS and macOS public beta, you can get access to this feature right now. And trust me, if you frequently use an iPad and a Mac simultaneously, this is not a feature you're gonna wanna miss out on. It kinda changes the game. Just in case you don't know how to get access to this beta for either your Mac or iPad, just go to beta.apple.com, sign up to become a member, and then follow the instructions per your device to enroll in the program. And after doing that, you should see a new software update populate in either the settings or Mac system preferences. And the update you should get should either be the 15.4 public beta for iPad OS and or the Mac OS Monterey public beta version 12.3. Assuming both of your devices are logged into the same iCloud account, Universal Control should work automatically with no setup required once you've got both of those public betas loaded up. But if you do end up having to set it up manually, you're gonna wanna go to the Mac system preferences and go to the display menu. And then you'll see this little tab right here that says add display. And you can see right here, it's already connected to my iPad Air right next to it. And I can also opt to add my Mac mini, which is in the other room. And then for iPad OS, all you have to do is go into the settings, the general tab, and then go to AirPlay and Handoff. The cursor in keyboard settings should be on by default, but if not, just go ahead and enable it, and you should see it pop up automatically in the display menu here. If you've done all of this and you're still not getting universal control to work, well, I'd say the general answer is we're working with a beta here, so not everything is going to be completely perfect, especially on the Mac side of things. And one of the ways you can tell this feature is a little buggy is because these wallpapers are supposed to be matched because these are the same wallpaper, um, but clearly it's not updated here on the iPad. And I never had this wallpaper on my iPad, so this is just a an arbitrary decision on Apple's part, or I guess just the default. Um, so yeah, it's a beta, things are gonna be buggy. And something you're gonna notice when going into the display preferences menu on Mac OS is that you've got this setup here so you can adjust um, the layout based on where the Mac and iPad are physically uh, next to each other. So if the iPad was under the MacBook, I could do it like that. I can pretty much have it in any way I want. And when you go into display settings and then click on advanced here, this is where you're gonna find all of your toggles regarding universal control. So if you turn all of these off, then universal control is basically gonna stop working and you don't have to worry about uh, your mouse accidentally disappearing on you. So as you can see here, I just drag my cursor over to the left and it automatically pops up on the iPad Air here. It's a little laggy right now. I, I disconnected the iPad and reconnected it and for whatever reason, it's being a little laggier than it has been, but normally it's super smooth. And as I said, we're working with a Mac OS and an iPad OS beta here, so not everything's gonna work perfectly. But like I said, I can drag my cursor back and forth between the devices. Uh, and something that I think is really cool is that if you wanted to manually record something on your iPad without touching your hands, let's say you've got a podcast set up or something and you want to record video on your iPad, I know that's not something people traditionally do, but um, that's something you can easily do here. I can click record and record video uh, wirelessly without even having to touch the display. Stuff like that is really useful. There's always Bluetooth remotes and stuff like that you could use for something like this, but being able to do it from another Mac device is pretty cool too. Another cool thing to take note of, the gestures that you use on the MacBook trackpad are directly compatible with the iPad here. So as you can see here, doing my triple finger swipe and uh, I can go through these different applications. It's quite the thing. So the whole point of universal control, hence the name, is to be able to universally control all of your Apple products uh, with one cursor at a time or with one mouse at a time. But there's other neat stuff you can do with universal control as well. One of those being uh, files. So I'm gonna type here on my Mac. Notice how I'm typing on my Mac and the results are coming up on the iPad here. I typed in sun and I'm gonna drag this music file over to my MacBook Pro and I can open it and it played with no problem. And that's just one of the neat things about universal control, little things like that. And I'm sure over time, it's gonna get much more advanced. Hopefully it does. But keep note, if you try to drag the file back to the iPad, um, you're gonna have some trouble. You're basically gonna have to have the Files app open. Otherwise, there's gonna be nowhere for this iPad to accept this file, you know, based on the way iPadOS works. So you have to go back into the Files app 
and then you should be able to drag it back over. But the drag and drop policy also works for photos as well. So you can see here, I'm in the Apple Photos app. I'm gonna drag this picture I took here and it'll go right over to my Mac. And let's see how long it takes. Yeah, just about one second to drag that over. Let's see how big that file was, just so we can get an idea. So about 17 megabytes for the file, and it took about a second to copy over. That's pretty slick, I'm not gonna lie, and it's in full quality, it's the full image. I don't believe there's any compression that's been done here uh, since dragging it over. Let's see what happens when we try to drag it back. So we can't drag these files back, unfortunately, but it's cool that we can add them at least. So I thought it'd be interesting to do a Safari browser test just to make sure that we're not missing out on any potential browser compatibility here with Universal Control. I'm gonna take this nine to five Mac window and try dragging it over and yeah, it refuses to move. So there's definitely not any Safari compatibility with Universal Control just yet. But I do believe if I copy this nine to five Mac text right here, I should be able to paste it in with no problem. And yes, I can. That's a pretty clutch feature. Also gonna try adding some music from music app to music app. I also don't think this is gonna work at all, but let's give it a shot. So yeah, it does not look like it added at all. Pretty much nothing to do here. Although I was able to grab it over and actually have it over in the iPad. So it recognizes that it's a music file, but it's just not letting me add it to the library this way. So yes, it is cool to be able to transfer your cursor and use the keyboard on one device and have it type in on another device uh, based on what universal control allows. But I will say that this feature is pretty limited so far. There's obviously only a handful of things you can do. And it's really gonna be up to Apple to improve on this feature over the years to make it better and better and more useful because if this is gonna be the cap as far as all that you're able to do, then it's kind of a party trick and I'm sure people will get use out of it um, using a Mac and iPad simultaneously, but that's a pretty niche group. Not a lot of people are actually doing that all the time. So it would be kind of a throwaway if Apple didn't update this further so that you can do a lot more stuff with it, like dragging browser windows over, being able to copy uh, different files over, stuff like that. That'll really make this feature a whole lot more useful. And although I've had my screen on it at a decently high brightness uh, for the duration of me recording this video, I have noticed pretty subpar battery life with my iPad ever since installing this beta. And yes, this is a beta, so the battery life issue could be completely unrelated to universal control, and it very may well be, but I'm just keeping that in mind as far as things I'm noticing since I've been using this feature. I'm not saying universal control is a battery hog, I'm not out there making that claim, but it could be. But overall, I'm very excited for the future of universal control. I think we're off to a really great start. You have to keep in mind that this isn't even the official release. They haven't put universal control in an official release for Mac OS or iPad OS. So these betas could just be giving us a small taste of what's to come. So we'll be looking forward to that official release when we can actually get our hands on the completely full version and completely stable version of universal control. But so far, so good. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this because we've got a bunch more content coming pretty soon. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.